We all have experienced a certain spark when we try to remove our woolen sweater and we have to stick it to the body or walk across a carpet and receive a shock. From the basic physics concept, we know that all the matter is made up of atoms. So let me just write it for you. So everything in this world is matter. All the matter is made up of atoms. Further, atoms are divided into electrons and we have protons and then we have neutrons. Electrons and protons are equal in number. Now when we talk about charge, it is the electrical property of all the atomic particles which make up the matter. So charge is the electrical property. So I'm just writing it here, electrical property. And this is denoted as charge. All right, so we have matter. All the matter are made up of atoms, which is further divided into electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons and protons are equal in number. Charge is the electrical property of atoms. So this means that each and every atom in this world will have some amount of charge. Charge on an electron is equals to 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. This is the magnitude of the charge on an electron. And by convention, we take the sign of this value to be negative. Similarly, proton, it will have charge of same magnitude. So this will be 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. And the sign of charge on proton is taken as positive. Now, since the electrons and protons are equal in number, atom is electrically neutral. So let me just write it over here. But before that, I'll change the color very quickly. So yeah. So atom is neutral. It's better to say electrically neutral. All right. So let me just summarize it, what we have discussed. In this world, everything is matter. All the matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are further divided into electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons and protons are equal in number. Charge is the electrical property of atoms, so each and every atom in this world will have some amount of electrical charge. Electron has a charge of minus 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Proton has a charge of positive 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Since electrons and protons are equal in number, atom is electrically neutral. In the last lecture, we have discussed that the SI unit, so SI unit of charge is coulombs. So this is coulombs and it is denoted by C. So the C denotes the coulomb. So SI unit of charge is coulomb, but coulomb is a very, very large unit. Let me just show you how. We see that charge on one electron is minus 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs and if I take the magnitude this sign can be neglected all right so charge on one electron is 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs now let's apply some unitary mathematics so if one electron contains this much amount of charge then one coulomb will contain 1 over 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 electrons. And this fraction right over here turns out to be 6.24 times 10 to the power 18 electrons. So see that one coulomb contains so many electrons. So now you see that coulomb is a really, really large unit. That is why in reality, when we talk about charges, they are measured in picocoulomb or nanocoulomb or even microcoulomb. Picocoulomb stands for 10 to the power minus 12 coulombs. Nanocoulomb stands for 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs. And we have microcoulombs over here. This stands for 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs. All right. 
According to experimental observation, the only charge that can exist in nature is integral multiple of electronic charge. So let me just show you what I mean. So it means that we can only calculate charge in integral multiple of electron. So there will be only one electron, two electron, say five electron and how about 99 electron. There won't be any 1.5 electronic charge or 2.333 electronic charge. No, all these things are wrong. So there will be one electronic charge, two electronic charge, five and 99 and any other integral multiple of the electronic charge. And charge on one electron is 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs and of course a negative sign over here. All right, so this is an important point and, and you definitely need to remember this. So I'll just mark it in, in red. So this is important. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about one more important point that is law of conservation of charge so let me just write it law of conservation of charge so this states that charge can neither be created nor be destroyed so no creation no destruction So charge can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one source to another. Let's see an example and try to understand what I mean. Suppose you have a conducting wire. So I'll quickly draw a conducting wire over here. Since this is a matter, it will contain some protons and some electrons inside. And suppose we have a battery over here. So I'll just draw a battery. Yeah. So this is positive terminal and this is negative terminal. Now you connect battery to the connecting wire like this. Now see that the conducting wire on its own does not contain any electric charge. It contains equal number of protons and electrons so it is electrically neutral. Now when you connect this connecting wire through battery, battery contains some electromotive force. Don't worry if you don't understand the concept of electromotive force. This is some sort of force which is stored in battery. When you connect the connecting wire through the battery, some amount of force will be applied in one direction to the conducting wire. Now see that some amount of energy is transferred from battery to the conducting wire. No charge is created and no destruction happened. Only some amount of charge is transferred from battery to the conducting wire. So this states law of conservation of charge. Now when a conducting wire is connected to the battery, charges are compelled to move. Positive charges move in one direction and negative charges move in the other direction. So let me just mark it. All the positive charges will move, let's say from left to right. So all the negative charges will move from right to left. This motion of charges creates electric current. Now it is conventional to take the direction of positive charges or protons as the direction of current. So protons are moving from left to right. So direction of current will be from left to right as well. So this is I current. You can say that the direction of current is opposite to the direction of electrons. So let me just write it over here for your reference. All right, so direction of current is same as the direction of protons. Now, when we need to define the current, we will say that current is the net flow of positive charges. So current is equals to net flow of positive charges. So let me just write this statement mathematically. When I say net flow of positive charges, I mean that I is equals to difference in charge over difference in time. So this is the net flow of charge over time. This is the formal definition of the current which we will be using throughout this course. Current is equals to net flow of charges over time. Okay. 
when we need to calculate the amount of charges transferred between time t0 to t1 we will write it as q equals integration from t0 to t1 i of dt this will give us the net amount of charge transferred between t0 to t1 it's a good practice to maintain a formula book i will attach the links to my formula book which we will be building throughout the course let's talk more about current in the next lecture